Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Turn it off. Man. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. So glad to have everybody connecting with us this morning. Good morning, Sister Sheila. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Tanzala. Good morning, Emma. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hopefully everybody's doing well on this blessed Lord's Day. And indeed, it is a blessed Lord's Day. Good morning, Melanie. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Make sure you go ahead and share this. We got a, a good service lined up for everybody. Good morning, Melody. Tell Father I said hello and everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Louise. Good morning, Mother. Brody Cunningham. Albert Goodwin. Good morning, brother. Good morning, Dee. Andrea Love. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Sister Patsy, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Cousin Jackie, as you're coming on, just give us a shout out where you're, where you're tuning in from. Good morning, Minister Rosemary, Sister Grier, Pamela Brown, good morning. Good morning, Sarah Regina, Cedric Thompson, good morning. Aunt Jean, good morning, good morning, guys. Donna Faye, good morning, good morning. Sister Johnny, good morning. Good morning, Father. Pastor Cunningham Sr., good morning, Kimberly McCullough. Good morning, everybody. Minnie Stewart, good morning, good morning, guys. All right, give me some volume there. Amen. Amen. How many know that every praise belongs to our God? Absolutely, every praise belongs to our God. And we're so blessed and we're so privileged this morning to have this wonderful opportunity to come into your hearts and to come into your homes. I'm grateful and blessed for what God is doing and what God is going to do. Amen. Amen. Let us get a word of prayer before we get started. Dearly beloved Father, we are grateful, we are humble, we are privileged, we are thankful just to be in your presence this morning. And we're praying like right now, Lord God, that you just allow your presence to just fall afresh on us today. Yes. We're grateful that you allowed us last night to get a wonderful night's nice rest. Yes. Uh, no storms were brewing and we appreciate you, Lord God, that you touched us early this morning and gave us an opportunity to come before you into your presence. You told us to come boldly before your yes. presence and God, we're here unashamed, Lord God, with no fear. We are grateful, Lord God, for all of those that are connected, uh, particularly my St. Paul family and all yes. my yes. friends and my yes. families and acquaintances, Lord God. I'm praying a special blessing over the worship service, over the word that will go forth, that it will find good soil. And God, we're so grateful, we're so humble, we're so yes. privileged, and we're so thankful right now, Lord God, for what you're going to do. Yes. I believe, Lord God, that hearts will be changed. I, be, I believe that minds will be regulated. I believe that, Lord God, souls will come running yes. saying, what must I do to get to know the man you're preaching about, to get to know the man that you're yes. worshiping? So God, we're grateful and honored just to be able to come into your presence yes. in the mighty, wonderful, matchless Awesome name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody that I have not spoken to. Amen. Let us get ready to get into our worship service this morning. Amen. How many know that every praise belongs to our God? Amen. 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 Every Amen. praise belongs to our God. Let us worship him this morning. Good morning, everybody. Come on. Wherever you are, whether you're in your home, if you're driving, make sure you're safe. But let's worship our God this morning. Come on, everybody. Come on, family. Let's lift them up. Every praise. Every praise to our God. Come on, come on. Give it to him. With one accord. Come on, say every praise. Every praise to our God. Come on, everybody. Sing hallelujah. To our, to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Always, do Always do our God. Our God. Come on, everybody say. Every praise. Every praise to, our God. to our God. Come on, everybody. Let's say it again. Every praise. Every praise to, our to our God. Every word of worship, word of worship with, one with one accord. 
Come on, everybody say every praise. Every praise to our God. Come on, everybody. Sing hallelujah. Come on. To our God. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, it's do our God. Come on, everybody say every praise. Every praise to our God. Come on, let's take it up one time and say every praise to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Come on, everybody say every praise. Every praise to our God. Come on, everybody sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, yes, to our God. Come on, everybody say every praise. Every praise to our God. Come on, let's take it up one time and say every praise to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Come on, everybody say every praise to our God. That's it. Come on, everybody sing hallelujah. God. Glory, hallelujah. It's do our God. Come on, everybody, say every praise. Every praise. To our God. Come on, everybody, say every praise. Every praise. To our God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, everybody, open up your mouth and say. Yeah, come on, everybody, say it. Come on, everybody, say God, my deliverer. Yes he, is. yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. It sounds good, family. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our every way to worship with one accord. Oh, every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Come on. Every praise, every praise, every praise. Early in the morning, I give my God praise. Every praise, every praise. Anybody love him on the side there? Every praise, every praise, every praise. Come on, say, it's to our God. Come on, give God praise right there. Oh, hallelujah. How many know that every praise belongs to our God? Amen, amen, amen. Look, you all know what time it is right now. It is time to go ahead and share it with somebody. <laughs> if you haven't done so already, go ahead and share it with your family. Go ahead and share it with your friends. Go ahead and light it up. Amen. This is our opportunity to tell God how good he is by letting somebody else know how great he is. Amen. Go ahead and share it right now. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Barbara Green, Sister Smith. Amen. Renata Hayes, Johnny Davis, Lazare. Hey, tell J.A. I say good morning. good morning. We all say good morning. And Justice, tell the family we all say good morning. Minnie Murdoch, Betty Newell. Good morning, good morning everybody. What's up, cousin Christine Higgins? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Janice and Janetta. Good morning, everybody. LaKenya. Thank you for sharing, everybody. Amen. How many know that God is worthy of all the honor? He's worthy of all the praise. It is certainly due his name. Oh, hallelujah. We want God to speak to our hearts this morning. We want God to come into our hearts this morning. So go ahead and share it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We're going to continue in that same vein of worship because we want God to come into our hearts we want God to speak to our hearts. 
We want God to invade our hearts because he's a God that is loving, a God that is kind. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Mildred. Good morning, everybody. All right. Let us continue on. Hallelujah. Come on, family. Amen. This song simply says, Lord, I'm grateful. Anybody grateful this morning? Amen. I don't know about you, but Amen. the Cunningham family, we all are grateful that God blessed us this morning. Amen. Amen. And we are grateful. Come on, let's worship this morning. Come on. Come on, put those holy hands together. Yeah. Yeah, listen to this. Watch this. You brought me through this. All right, all right. Yes. You brought me through that. Oh, God. Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am. To you. Let me say it again. You brought me through this. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You brought me through that. Lord, God. Help me say it this morning. Come on, say. You brought me through this. Woo. Come on, everybody, say you brought me through. You brought me through that. Come on, everybody, say. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. To you, to you, to you. Come on, everybody, say it again. You brought me through this. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, say. You brought me through that. Oh yes. Oh yes, Lord, I'm grateful. Come on, everybody, say to you, to you. This is the part I like about it right here. You made a way. How many know that God is a way maker? Out of no way. Oh, Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am to you. Hallelujah. Listen. You opened doors, yes, that were closed in my face. Oh, 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 Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am to you. Come on, everybody, say it again. You brought me through this. You ought to give God some hearts right there if he brought you out. You brought me through that. Oh, yes, yes, Lord, I'm grateful. Say to you, come on, say it again. Yeah. You brought me through the yeah. You brought me through the Yes, I am to you. Come on, continue to say you brought me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God today. Oh, yeah. Lord, I'm Hallelujah. Lord, I'm grateful to you. Come on, everybody, say it again. You brought me, you brought me through this, yeah. You brought me, you brought me through this. I'm To hear you sing, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord, I'm grateful. Come on, Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful right now. Yes, you opened up supernatural doors. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Come on, everybody, say to you, to you, to you. Come on, come on, somebody on the other side, give God some hearts. Come on, give him some praise right now. Come on, tell the Lord how grateful you are. Come on, just shout with a voice of triumph today. If God is 
done anything for you. You ought to praise him right now. You ought to magnify him right now. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, everybody say, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Come on. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Anybody grateful? I'm so grateful, Lord. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Come on, give him praise right there. Yeah. Come on, put your holy hands together and give God some glory if you're grateful today. Oh, to you. To you. <laughs> oh, come on, give God some praise. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Welcome out again. Amen. I bring you greetings on behalf of the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. And I'm just so elated to come into your hearts. My family and I, we're so elated to come into your hearts this morning, to your homes this morning. And we are grateful for what God has done and is doing in this moment and in this season. Amen. Amen. So glad to have all of you, the 91 of you that I see. Amen. And all of you that are sharing and will be hitting the replay. God bless you immensely. I pray that God will do something existential in your life on this blessed Lord's Day. Just want to give you a quick, couple of quick announcements if you don't mind. First of all, I want to give you the mission of our uh, of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Always like to keep the mission before you. Our mission there is to engage Christians in a family setting atmosphere and to provide a community focused outreach with a desire to heal the hurting and to provide relief to those that are suffering. To encourage Christians to live a lifestyle of praise and worship and to honor and give a reverence to our Almighty God. Also to empower Christians through the Word of God to live holy, healthy, and spirit-filled lives to the glory of God. And then finally, to equip Christians with the tools needed to evangelize, witness, and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is our mission there at St. Paul. Amen. Our theme for this year is going higher. Amen. I know amidst the coronavirus, it looks like everything is going lower, but I want to tell you, and I'm encouraged today, that God is still going to take us higher. Somebody need to pin right there. I'm going higher. I'm still going higher in the Lord. God has some great and awesome plans in store for us, but there are some things we got to do in the meantime. We've got to make sure that we are going higher in our devotion. God has allowed us to have more time to get into our word, more time to pray, more time to fellowship with our family. So we want to go higher in the Lord. Somebody need to shout higher. Amen. Also, I want to encourage everybody to connect to our audio call. Last, last week, we had some complications, and everybody that was able to get this number, make sure you jot it down. You can reconnect with us in the event that something crazy like we had last Wednesday happens, where Facebook automatically just went out. And so guess what? We still have the audio call. So take a picture, take a snapshot of that, jot the number down and the passcode, or you can just, um, just scroll, scroll through our Facebook feed, and you'll find, our, um, you'll find it there as well. Amen. Also, um, our daily devotion every month, every um, morning, Monday through Friday, uh, yours truly um, is giving you a, a glimpse of my personal devotion. Amen. So come in, join us. I believe that many people that are getting up and tithing their time at six o'clock is being blessed. Can I get a witness for all of you that guys that are connecting every week, um, every day that you're being blessed? Amen. So look, I encourage everybody to just get up just a little early um, and you don't even have to get out your bed. Just pull the covers from over your head and hit the um, hit the button and you'll be able to see us live all week long. This past week, we've been talking about courage. We're going to culminate it today talking about courage to face our enemy. Amen. Next week, all week long, we're going to be talking about endurance. Amen. Endurance to run the race that God has put before us. Amen. So connect with us, set your clocks and get up and let's fellowship together. Amen. 
Make sure, if you haven't done so, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you will find us at the St. Paul MB Church, uh, Camita, Mississippi. Watch us on YouTube. If you have family and friends that uh, do not um, like Facebook or Instagram or things of that nature, they can definitely get on, uh, get on the internet and browse and find YouTube. And you'll find all of the uh, messages that we've done over the last couple of weeks. God wants to do some blessed things in your life. So if you want to hear it, hit replay often. Uh, God will do something um, big in your life as well. Amen. Also, follow us on Instagram. We just opened that up a couple of weeks ago. So we want everybody to just follow our Instagram page. We're going to start uploading some things this, this week as well. Um, so definitely follow us on Instagram. And this is very, very important. Make sure that you get up, get out, and get active. You guys have seen me get out. Um, God has allowed us to be able to have some time to be able to do that, to be healthy and be fit, and to make sure that we are doing our due diligence with our health. Um, this morning, by this morning, I actually got up about seven o'clock and ran four miles. Yeah, because I'm committed to make sure that I stay healthy because there's a, a big race in front of us. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about a half a marathon or a full marathon. I'm talking about the race that God has for us to run. We've got to be strong. We've got to be physically fit. We've got to be spiritually fit to do to do the things God is getting ready to do. This thing, coronavirus, is eventually at some point in time will subside and God will be looking for people that are fit and in shape spiritually and physically to, uh, to do what he's called us to do. Amen. Amen. Also, make sure that as you go out, that you're practicing social distancing, six feet apart. Um, so make sure that uh, when you go out, um, you don't you, you don't hook up with somebody that you don't know. If, if, if it's your family, uh, for sure, that's OK with your wife or children. That's OK. But make sure everybody else that you don't know, make sure that you're staying six feet apart from them. And if you've just got to go to the store and I understand that it is a necessity that we have to make sure that we provide the necessary means for our family ma uh, and households, make sure that you're gloving up and masking up. <laughs> make sure. I Look, I have a social responsibility to tell you guys to make sure that you are doing that. I, look, I see so many people, and I'm not going to I'm not gonna beat a dead horse, but I see so many people going out into the stores without gloves and without masks on. It is, it is frightening, to say the least. Look, God has given us common sense, um, so make sure that you are doing your due diligence by being safe. Amen? Amen. All right. Come on. We got one more song before we get into the Word. I pray that God will continue to bless you. How many actually love the Lord more than anything? I know I do. My family, we love the Lord. Amen. We love him more than anything. So let's, let's, let's have some worship right here. Let's worship our God right here. Amen. We love him more than anything. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's bless him today. Let's magnify him for the things that he has done because he is so awesome and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Let us praise him. Amen. like we may be having a little slight complication here. One second, everybody. That's the good thing about technology. It is good when it works. All right. Well, look, we're going to go ahead and get into the word. Amen. I believe that's the main thing that everybody came for this morning. Amen. Family, thank you so much for connecting with us. Go ahead and tell the family thank you this morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and get into the word this morning. Amen. But everybody know that everybody know the song this morning. Everybody know that we ought to love God more than anything. Amen. Amen. We ought to praise him and worship him and love him more than anything. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to be coming from 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verses 45 through 51. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verses 45 through 51. Amen. God has a word for us as, as we continue to stay in that same vein of courage. It simply says it like this. In 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 51, it says, David replied to the Philistines, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God, the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, the Lord will conquer you and will kill you and cut off your head. Then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. Verse 47 says it like this. And everyone assembled here would know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with a sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle 
and he will give you to us. Yeah. Verse 48 says it like this. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. And then verse 49, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you here, verse 50 says, so David triumphed over the Philistine with, a, with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. And then look at verse 51. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Amen. Thus ends the reading of the word of God. I just want to simply just talk about um, this morning, just very, very briefly, courage to face your enemy. Amen. Courage to face your enemy. Courage to face your enemy. Let us go ahead and get into this. I want to ask a couple of questions. Where does courage come from? What does courage come from? A and how do you get it when you need it? When, when some fears begin to tower over you and threaten you and you feel like cowering and fleeing into some cave of protection. Do you have the courage uh, to act outwardly on what you see on the inside? I, I want to impress upon your heart uh, here this morning that you must muster up courage or you will die a dreamer. I have learned in my personal life, my brothers and sisters, I have learned in, in my life that it takes courage to be successful. There, there is something else that I have learned is this, that it is far easier not to be successful and even easier to be miserable. Can I get a witness right there? Right. And how many of you know that misery will always have some company? And as soon as you finally make it out of the pit of the mundane and taste an ounce of success, that contempt will closely follow. I know I'm preaching better than you're saying amen already this morning. Amen. If you don't want to make waves, be mediocre. If you, if, you want, if you want to just stay where you are, be normal and fit in. Oh, yeah, I'm preaching. I'm going. I'm hitting you right in the gut already this morning. If you're more concerned about people than you are God, then neutralize everything he put into you and just fit in with everybody else. Dress like them. Walk like them. Act like them. Eat like them. Go where they go. Think like they think. Do what they do. And once you neutralize your uniqueness, you don't need courage. <laughs> My family looking at me like, whoa, that's deep, daddy. <laughs> it, it takes courage. It takes courage to be different. It takes courage to go where you've never gone before. It takes courage to, to get you outside of your four walls. It takes courage to be successful. It takes courage to win. See, watch this. I've learned something that people don't talk about people that don't win. If you win, they're going to talk about you. you do you have the courage to stand uh, there while the storms are raging and the people keep talking and you stand there and you say you've come too far to turn around? Do I have anybody that's connected with me this morning that says I've come too far to stop now? I've come too far to turn around. It takes courage Taylor, to be exceptional. Yeah. It takes courage to be wise. It takes courage to be rich. It takes courage to be educated. It takes courage to be knowledgeable. It takes courage. And I'm just wondering if there's anybody that is connected with us today that's, that's got the courage to say that after all I've been through, mm -hmm. my God. Uh, after all my ancestors have been through and after all my parents have been through, I didn't come through all of that just to fit in with normalcy. I have the courage to go after my dream. I have the courage, LaKenya Bunton, to write that book. I, I have the courage to learn from my mistakes. I want to, to, I want to ask you, uh, you need to ask yourself this, what's the worst possible thing that could happen 
If you said yes and you failed miserably, so, so, so don't just think about this loosely. I, I, I want you to get really specific and, and tease out every single scenario that could possibly go wrong and how you would deal with it. What most of us will discover is that no matter what the worst scenario is, we can actually handle it, but don't forget you've got to go to the flip side. Somebody say the flip side. You've got to go to the flip side too and ask yourself, what's the worst thing that can happen if you decide to do nothing and keep your life exactly as it is? Your regrets, my brothers and sisters, will start piling up like waffles and pancakes my family make on Waffle Wednesday. <laughs> for an answer, for an answer, I, I want us to look at one of the most uh, famous stories um, of all time in my estimation in first Samuel chapter 17 and one of the most misunderstood stories in the Bible. This is the story, of course, of David and Goliath 3000 years ago um, in the valley of Ella, a massive man named Goliath of Gath stepped out of the Philistine ranks to defy and taunt the army of Israel and its God. For 40 days, he harangued and harassed and the Israelite warriors, heaping shame on them. Since none dared to accept his fight to the death, winner takes all challenge. Every morning when he stepped forward, the men of God shrank back. Something is wrong with that picture, my brothers and sisters. Let me say it again. Every morning for 40 days, uh, when Goliath stepped forward, the men of God took steps back. Something is wrong with that picture. Yes, but then all of a sudden, a teenage Hebrew shepherd boy named David showed up in the camp with some bread and cheese for his soldier big brothers and heard the giant pour out his scorn on the impotent host of his Lord. Uh, David was indignant. David was livid. David was mad. David was upset. So he took his shepherd's sling, grabbed a few stones, knocked Goliath on the block, and chopped off his head. But, but many think David's defeat of Goliath is a story of personal courage in the face of overwhelming odds. Let me give you some clarity here. They see David as the archetypal uh, underdog, underdog here. An Old Testament type of Rocky Balboa. Yeah, standing up against this arrogant, powerful blowhard. Uh, they see him as a self-confident, independent young man uh, who was brave enough to fight for what was right and rely on his strength and skills rather than conform to conventional tactics. Y'all stay with me here. Yeah, The popular moral of this story is this, my brothers and sisters. Get out there and face down your giant because the, the heroically courageous come out on top. I would encourage somebody here this morning, my brothers and sisters, that you may be fearful and you may be afraid and you may be timid and you may be shy. But on the other side of all of your fear, on the other shy, side of all of your timidity is a God that is waiting to help you to conquer every giant that walks in your life. But that is not all what this story is about. It's true that David was courageous and, and courage is an essential glorious virtue. But when he faced Goliath, David's courage was a derivative virtue. Uh, it was being empowered by something else. Uh, but before we're looking at where David's courage came from, we need to ask why Saul and his so soldiers lacked it. Mm -hmm. at, at least at this moment. See, on the surface, the answer seemed uh, manifestly obvious. obvious. Uh, the, the Philistine champion was about nine feet tall uh, and incredibly strong. First Samuel, the 17th chapter, verses four through seven, you'll see that uh, Goliath, he was a he was highly trained. He was he was experienced uh, at massacring people uh, on a whim who had sent many opponents to meet their maker. Uh, physically, every man in the Hebrew camp was outclassed. Fighting Goliath looked like suicide, plain and simple. But it is, but it is not so plain and simple. First of all, because fighting Goliath didn't look like suicide to David Trinity. 
Yeah, uh, who was as physically outclassed as anyone else. But also because these men believed in God and knew Israel history, they knew the stories how God had overcome one giant adversary after another. Many of them had personally seen God do some amazing things, yeah, such as Jonathan's defeat of a Philistine uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 14. No, the men lacked courage, my friends, uh, to face Goliath because at that moment, the men lacked faith. Yeah, they lack faith. At this moment, for whatever reason, despite all the stories and past experience, watch this, and this is going to help somebody. I hope it blesses somebody. I hope if you find yourself in this, that you get out of it, get, get out of this. The, uh, the Goliath looked bigger than God. To these men, these men of God, Goliath looked bigger than God. The coronavirus. If you're not careful, will look bigger than God. The situation that you have permeating in your body, if you're not careful, will look bigger than God. Uh, your minuscule bank account, if you're not careful, you'll start looking at that and it will look bigger than God. That person that you're putting all your hope in, that person that you're putting all your faith in, when they let you down, they'll find, you'll find out that they're not bigger than God. Amen. Each man believed that if he went out against this humongous human, he would be on his own and end up as bird food for the, for the uh, vultures. Uh, but understand something. So what made David so different this morning? What made David so astronomically different. It was not because he had the self-generated raw cool courage of the American actor movie heroes that we see on Avengers. And as we see, uh, uh, my children absolutely love the Avengers, uh, Avengers movie and all the action heroes. Uh, but I want to tell you, what fueled David's courage was his confidence Taylor in God's promises. Oh, hallelujah. I want to tell you right there. His promises and God's power to fulfill his promise. We got to understand in the preceding chapter, Samuel, the prophet had informed David that God had chosen him to be the very next king of Israel and anointed him with his brothers around him. So I want to tell you right there, one of the reasons why David was so filled with courage because of the promise that he had on his life when he was a teenager. Yeah, when God, when God, when the prophet came and poured the oil on him and the oil ran down his beard and all of his brothers were standing around looking at him. The main reason why David had courage to face the enemy is because the promise that he got at Taylor at the age of 12. The promise that he got at the age of 15. And I want to tell you right now, everybody that is watching, God has given us a promise. And that promise ought to fuel us that when situations come and when calamity comes and when all these chaos is coming to our lives, that we had a promise that was spoken over our lives. And we can stand in the face of adversity, stand in the face of all the Goliaths that will ever come into our lives because of the promise. Somebody shout the promise. The promise. Yeah, he drew, uh, he drew confidence by remembering how God helped him in the past. And that's why I'm standing here today. Y'all just don't know that, that before I hit, uh, hit the live button, I'm shivering in my boots. But I've got a promise that God is with me. He promised that he'll never forsake me. I've got a promise that it may look easy as I stand here and minister to you. But I've got you to understand that I've got an humble spirit. And before I come before you, I want to make sure that God goes before me. Because God is the one that I put my trust. Amen. The reality was David's courage. Yes, yes. His courage was a wellspring on the inside of him. Yeah, he was not self-confident. He was God-confident. There's a difference. Because when you work in self-confidence, your self-confidence will fail you. But when you work in God-confidence, you'll be able to stand up against any Goliath and any giant, any person, any sickness, any disease, any pandemic that will ever come your way. David believed. David believed that God would never break his promise. And if Goliath made himself an obstacle to God's promises... God could flick him out of the way with a pebble. Yeah. David saw God as bigger and stronger than the fearful Philistine. So he went out to fight, knowing that God would give him the victory over Goliath. And when he did, the victory would demonstrate God's power and God's faithfulness, not David's courage. Let me say it again. I think somebody missed it. 
Watch this. The victory that uh, the victory would demonstrate God's power and God's faithfulness, not David's courage. See, God wants to stand up in you with faithfulness. He, 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 you know, we ought to be a striving. We ought to be uh, aspiring to be courageous people. But the courage ought to come from God's power. The courage ought to come from God's faithfulness and how he took care of you years ago, how he took care of you last night. But the question is, what's the source of your courage this morning? Oh, I'm getting ready to hit you in the heart now. What's the source of your courage, Jamie, Trinity and Taylor? What's the source of your courage, Shirley Carr and Clementine Jennings and Barbara Green and Valerie Caesar and Rose? What's the source of your courage, Minnie Stewart? Courage is not uh, an autonomous, self-generated virtue. Courage is always produced by some faith. Whether our faith is in God or whether our faith is in something else, courage is a derivative virtue for the Christian. Uh, a lack of courage, uh, what the writer of Hebrews calls shrinking back. That's what Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 37 and 38, uh, is always evidence of a lack of faith and a promise of God. We don't need to shrink back. Uh, some Goliath is looming larger than God in somebody's view right now. Some Goliath is loom, looming larger than, than God and is taunting you right now and humiliating you and, and calling out your God right now. And all we see is how weak and pathetic sometimes our faith is and how inadequate we are to face some situation. Fighting, uh, fighting Goliath uh, seems impossible and the thought immobilizes us at times. And all of us experience this fear. So did David. David is such a helpful example for us, not only because he fueled his confidence and courage to face Goliath from God's promises, but also because he so frequently felt fearful and needed to encourage his own soul again by remembering God's promises. A quick read through the first Psalm. You'll understand that the Bible says in Psalm 23, when he faced some stormy situation that the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, oh, how many know that? And I shall not want. He, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, leadeth me beside the still waters. And I want to tell you right now that when you face your stormy situation, when you face your Goliath, you've got to remember, recall, and refurbish and rekindle some stuff that you once leaned on in your faith. Amen. But faith made David more courageous. Uh, when he heard the Philistine defy the living God and his army, it made David mad. It made David angry. Goliath's taunt and accusations scorned God's glory. And when no one stepped up to defend God's name, none of these men that were older than David, not even his brothers, not even King Saul, it made God in the eyes of the Philistines look weak. Yeah, But I want to tell you, David would not tolerate it. We need a David spirit in our lives this morning, one that had God-confident faith. Yeah, and such should also be our response to every fear and lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of our God. Our fears are not primarily about us. Even though they feel that way, our feels, fears are primarily about God. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they impugn God's character and, and appears to call God weak and non-existent. They defy God and defy the church. That's why the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, uh, but of love and of a sound mind. And, and, and if we're not careful, we'll, we'll begin to minimize God and maximize our problems. We begin to minimize our God and start maximizing our worries. We'll begin to minimize our God and start maximizing our frustration. We'll begin to minimize God and start worrying about everything that we cannot control anyhow. You got to understand, in the new covenant, we are not to battle flesh and blood. Ephesians 6 and 12 says that. Uh, but to love our human enemies. Yes, we are to love our enemies. Love those that despitefully, knowingly misuse you. But however, we are to take every thought captive to obey Christ. Let me get on out of your way. See, our Goliaths are our indwelling sin. 
and, and the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And we are to wield warfare weapons against them, says 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, including the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. Amen. We are, we are to aim to kill every fear that comes our way. We are to aim and fear at every frustration that comes our way. We are to aim at, at fear everything that tries to minimize the maximize God in our lives. You got to understand something that these, these giants who are bigger than we are and very intimidating to our flesh uh, will be slain just like David's was by faith. Somebody need to shout by faith. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, the Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We got to have somebody need to shout now faith because I know you've got some strong stuff, brother, uh, that's going on in your life. You've got to have now faith. And I know you've got some crazy moments in your life, Valerie, but you've got to have now faith. I, I know you've got some jacked up situations in your life, Peaches, but you've got to have now faith. Shana Boo, I know that you've got some crazy things that is going on in your mind, but you've got to have now faith. Uh, brother, Sister jo Georgia Grace, and I want to tell you something. I'm going to go and get out your way. That I know that sometimes it looks bleak, and I know that sometimes it looks crazy, but you've got to have now faith. Yeah, these giants who are bigger than we are can seem intimidating to our flesh. But I want to encourage you that we don't walk by what we see. Can I get a witness right there? We walk by the faith that we are, that God has given unto us. And I told you this week, how in the world can I ascertain faith? How can I acquire faith? Faith come by hearing. And don't you just hear any type of thing. Don't you just hear any type of chatter. You need to hear the word of the Lord. You need to hear a transformative word. You need to hear a word of clarity. You need to hear a word that will help you to get out of your stinky situation. You need to hear a word that will help you to step out of the boat and allow you to walk on water. You need to hear a word. And I want to tell you that Jesus is worthy to be praised. Amen. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, is the person that I have found to be faithful when I am not. <laughs> Jesus is one that I have learned to put all of my hope in when everything around me is hopeless. And I want to encourage somebody as I get ready to get out of your way this morning that you've got to have courage to face your enemy. And the Bible says that, that, that when, when Goliath started coming at David, I'm getting ready to help you now. When the Goliath started coming at David, David began to go towards him and began to start slinging his sling. And I want to tell you right here, the main reason why I believe that, uh, that David was able to do what he did so proficiently and so effectively is because while he was out in the pasture uh, covering and taking care of his sheep, he was throwing his rocks and hitting little birds off their nests and, and throwing his rocks and being able to kill lions and kill, kill bears. He was able to do it. That's why it was no problem for him to stand up against Goliath is because he had already been practicing behind the scenes because if you can stand up against a lion, a man with this roar, if you can stand up against a bear with all of his claws, there is absolutely no reason why you cannot stand up against a man. And I don't care if he's nine foot tall or two feet tall. I want to tell you that you got to have some God confidence in this world. And I want to tell you this morning, that's why I love Jesus Christ, because he's worthy to be praised. Because he was the one that helped me to find, he was the one that helped me to get out of my situation. When I found myself fearful and afraid and timid and shy, God allowed me to stand up and be all that he called me to be. And he's worthy to be praised. Jesus is the God man. He's very God and he's very man. He came through 42 generations, reduced himself to a seed, implanted himself in the womb of a woman and came and dwelled among men. And I want to tell you that Jesus had some courage. He is worthy to be praised. Jesus being God circumvented the natural order of death, excusing man from the birth process and fathered himself through the Holy Spirit. I tell you that Jesus had some courage. He is worthy to be praised. Jesus of Nazareth was born king of kings and he was born Lord of lords. I tell you that Jesus had some courage and wise men honored him at his birth with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. But he was born 
born in a stable, laid in a manger, and wrapped in swaddling clothes. I tell you, Jamie, that Jesus has some courage, but he is still worthy to be praised. Though he had an humble birth, uh, by him were all things made. They were made, and without him was not anything made. And yet foxes have holes, and, and birds have nests. But Jesus, the Son of God, when he came into this world, had nowhere to lay his head. But Trinity, I want to tell you that he's still worthy to be praised. Yeah. Jesus, the immaculate Lamb of God, is worthy. Jesus, the great I am the, uh, that was before Abraham was. This Jesus came through the line and lineage of David, died on an old rugged cross because he chose to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This Jesus, I tell you, Jamie, is worthy to be praised. Jesus, who died between two thieves, he had some courage, burdened under the weight of the world's sin, died and laid his head in the laps of his shoulder and cried, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Jesus has some courage. This Jesus, I tell you, is worthy to be praised. This Jesus that was buried in the barbary tomb but used the opportunity of death and dying to descend into Hades and preach to the captive souls that were there. I tell you, Jesus has some courage. This Jesus released those souls and set those souls free, then sealed up Hades' hell when he took the charge of the keys of hell, death, and the grave and arose early. Amen. Sunday morning arose before the sun had risen in the eastern sky. He rose as the firstborn among the resurrected. He arose never to die no more. I tell you, Jesus has some courage. This Jesus I tell you about is still worthy to be praised. This Jesus can save to the utmost. This Jesus can deliver all threats. He can deliver all temptations. He can deliver all trials. He can deliver you from all your tribulations. He can deliver you from all your terror. He can deliver you from all your trauma. Jesus is still worthy. Somebody shout worthy. worthy. He's worthy to be praised. And you ought to trust him today. Yes, you ought to shout unto him today. You ought to give him glory because you have the responsibility to praise him. Amen. God says, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. You should praise him today because you are a child of God and you have a right to praise him. The scripture says, as many as received him, he gave them power. Somebody need to shout power. Gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Yes, and you ought to praise him today because you have a right and a reason to praise him. Amen. God has been good to you. Yes, he, he touched you this morning with his finger of love. Awaken you from a world of non-existence. Gave you the blessing of a right mind, a rejoicing spirit, a glad heart. The hope to run on to see what the end is going to be. We ought to praise his holy name. Yes, and just like David stood up as he pro prophesied that he was going to cut off the head of Goliath. As soon as that, 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 that stone sunk into Goliath's skull, the Bible says, just like David proclaimed, that your head was going to be cut off. The Bible said that David got to top the problem, <laughs> that David got to top the giant, that David had the courage to say, you, you've been prophesying and you've been trying to speak against my God, but I want to tell you today, I'm cutting your head off. And I want to tell you that you've got to say the same thing. In every problem, you got to say, I'm cutting the head off. Every situation you've got going on in your life, you say, I'm cutting the head off. And you've got to praise God right now that he is the one that is sitting firmly on the throne. And that's why we praise him today for the courage to face our giants. Oh, bless the Lord today. We ought to thank him right now. We ought to praise him right now. We ought to give him glory right now uh, that he is one that is firm uh, in his promises. You can face your giant today. You can face your problems today. But just by chance, just by chance, uh, you don't know Christ. Just by chance, you don't know him. I would encourage you today to get to know him. If you have accepted Jesus Christ, but you have found yourself falling into a, a grave weight of fear. If by chance you are there today and you're saying, God, I want to get back into that place of courage. I want to walk in courage again. I want to act in courage again. If that's you. You can just simply say, that's me. You can type it on that. That's me. That's me. That word was for me because I found myself fearful uh, to do anything. I found myself fearful. I, I don't even do anything. I, God, I want to be, be courageous again. If that's you, just simply say, that's me. 
And you want God to enable you to help to cut off the head of all your problems again. Cut off all your worry, your doubt, and frustrations and fears. If that's you, just say, Lord, that's me. Oh, hallelujah. Bless the Lord this morning. Bless the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And if by chance, if by chance you've never yet given Christ your life, and this is your first time ever hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, this is your first time and you've never given Christ your soul and you want him to be uh, the Savior and the Lord of your life, it's simple as ABC. Admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you don't have it together. Admit that you are in a bad place with your soul and you want Christ to come in. Admit that. And then you believe with all of your heart, authentically, genuinely believe with all of your heart that God raised Jesus up from the dead. Uh, and he, uh, God blessed him to be victorious on that Sunday morning. You believe that and then confess with your mouth uh, that Jesus Christ is the Savior and that, he want, that you want him to be the Lord of your life. If that's you, if that's you, repeat after me. Dear Lord, I believe uh, that you are the son of God. And I admit that I don't have it all together. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I believe, I believe that God sent you into this world to forgive me of all my sins. And I confess that you are God and God alone. If this is your first time ever saying that, we want to celebrate God with you and say, that's me. As soon as God allows us to get back into the church houses, uh, we want to baptize you. Wherever you may be worshiping, wherever you are, get back into the house of the Lord whenever we reopen and say, I gave my life to Christ on the 26th day of April, and I want to be baptized as an outward sign that I have had an inward change. Oh, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, bless him. Amen. I pray that word bless your heart. Thank you all so much for connecting. Hey, man, look, our last and final act of worship as we get ready to get out of your way. And thank you so much, St. Paul, uh, for your blessings. Thank you so much for continuing to be diligent in your giving. And I pray that God continue to bless you immensely. We have the Give and Fire option where you can download it on the App Store or Google Play, or you can simply give via the Cash app. You can find us at St. Paul Camita. Amen. God will bless you immensely. Amen. If you are able to, if you are unable to due to COVID-19, God understands and knows your situation and your heart. Amen. But if this ministry at all have been a blessing to you, continue to support it. Amen. In your in your giving. Amen. God bless you so much. Let us pray over Father God. And thank you so much for those that are giving into the service of the Lord. And I pray right now for souls, for the souls that have um, accepted you as Lord and Savior. And I pray right now, Lord God, that you will bless all of those that recommitted their lives as well. And God, we love you. We honor you. We bless you immensely for all the things that you're doing and will do in our lives. Amen. Look, my brothers and sisters, thank you all so much for connecting with us this week. And uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, you will be able to connect with us on tomorrow morning at Amen. six o'clock a.m. May God bless you all immensely.